This podcast is part of the Robots Radio Rocket Club, a program designed to help all podcasts reach their full potential. For information about joining the Robots Radio Rocket Club, check out robotsradio.net. Hey, all you heroes and champions, crows, pirates, and inquisitors. Welcome to the Dragon Age Lorecast. I'm Shelby. And I'm Austin. And we are so excited to bring you this podcast. Every episode, we'll be talking about a different topic in the Dragon Age universe. From the Maker to Lyrium to Aravels, we will cover it all. There will be spoilers. And always remember, swooping is bad. Hello and welcome to the Dragon Age Lorecast. My name is Shelby and I'm super excited to be here with you today. And I'm also joined by all of our awesome First Enchanter and higher tier patrons. And we are all going to talk about a very interesting topic today. But first, we'll introduce ourselves. Hello, I am Tash or Kolka Shins and my pronouns are he, him. Hi, I am Elizabeth or Lizzie, otherwise known as LVCC13, and my pronouns are she, her, or that crazy weird lady. Hello, I am the Wesbotron, known for my hot takes and spicy stuff on the Discord. Also, go by the Wesbotron. Hi, I'm Lewis, uh, pronouns are uh, he, him. Hello, uh, I'm Kevin Tower, aka Nick B, uh, pronouns are he, him. I'm Genesis, the character deep dive girl. Uh, Psych, uh, he, him. Uh, Lisa, I'm the odd one out with my they, them preference. And also very excited to be here. Let's see who goes to horny jail. <laughs> yes, and I am she cup and I use uh, she, her pronouns. So tonight we are talking about a very interesting topic that was suggested, I think, by Cash. Is that right? Yes. So, yes, I'm awesome. so excited. <laughs> so we are talking about... What demons would you be most susceptible to from the Dragon Age universe, of course? And we've kind of given us the option of you can either talk about it like you yourself perspective or from the perspective of your hero, hawk, or herald. Um, Any of those is fine or kind of both if you want to. Um, So that's the question. It very much goes with our season three topic of magic and Um, all things magic, spirits, and demons. So let's just dive right in. I brought a list of demons. You guys know I love a good list. So these are all the demons or um, magical creatures that are very similar to demons that I could think of. So um, I'll read them out. So we've got fear, nightmare, regret, rage, pride, desire, despair, terror, envy, hunger, sloth, gibbering horror, revenant, possessed corpses, shades, abominations, and wisps. So we can go in any order. Who would like to go first? I don't know if anybody wants to go first. (laughs) I'll go first. Um, yeah, I thought I would be uh, addressing this from the perspective of my Dalish Inquisitor because I've got some worries about her simply becoming corrupted by a rage demon, which is unfortunate because, as we all know, they're very easy to manifest. They have a very simple underlying emotion and they're very easy to beat as well. So she doesn't quite deserve that. But um, I gave her this sad character art where, uh, where she started out pretty angry as you would be when you get thrown into a situation where you're suddenly a Chantry hero, but everyone still hates you because you're an elf. And then I also unfortunately put her in the relationship with Solas. I did not know the background there at the time. And that kind of softened her up and gave us some new perspectives. But then they were standing in this weird little lake and he threatened to take away her Valas Lynn. And she was like, no. Dalish pride all the way and um, uh, dumped him. I had no idea what I was doing there. So (laughs) in retrospect, it's pretty funny. So yeah, I think right now she would be running around preventing, trying to prevent elves from getting recruited by Solas. And she would be sort of, yeah, having a rage slash despair, possibly demon corruption risk going with that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Definitely get that. Absolutely get that. Who wants to go next? 
I'll go next. Um, for me, the the demon that I think that I would be most vulnerable to, I don't know, some of y'all think that it would be a desire demon, but it would not be. It would be a despair demon. So not only are they just, you know, like some of the most annoying demons to come out of Fade Rifts, you know, always just like shooting ice and stuff at you, but they, they are they are terrifying to look at. Like it's just such giant teeth like gnashing at you and like their black cloaks. But the thing that sticks out to me most with despair demons is uh, is their main like codex entry. Um, it's, a, it's a Templar um, giving a lecture and he says, they are not the antithesis of justice or valor, but rather of hope. They form nightmares tearing away the foundations of self and purpose and despair demons are most often attracted to like the most you know dreary and downtrodden places so you know slums alienages prisons but for me it's just like i feel like trying to escape that that despair will be harder because to me that is a lot more insidious than than rage or desire or pride and it's it is a slow suffocating weight um and it just terrifies me. Yeah, someone said in chat that, um, Elizabeth, you said in chat that they remind you of Dementors. And I completely agree. Like the first, I didn't really think that when I saw them in game, but I think it was when I was doing research for that episode um, that you see the like close up of their face. I was like, absolutely not. That is the most horrifying thing I've seen in Dragon Age. So that's a big no for me. Thank you. Uh, who wants to go next? Okay, I think I'm gonna be the first one thrown into horny jail, but not necessarily for that reason. Um, I think me personally, I'd be really susceptible to desire demons because if you remember from Dragon Age Origins, when you're in the Circle Tower, that Templar who was ensnared by a desire demon, it wasn't that he was horny necessarily, the desire demon wove that whole dream of being a husband and having a family, being a father, not being a Templar. And I'm just kind of like, I'm in a place right now where if someone like, I know this is going to be kind of weird, but like if someone manifested Colin wearing nothing but a kilt with a ring box in his hand and saying, let's get married and we can have four kids, six dogs, two nugs, three cats, and Dorian can come visit us once a month, I'd be like, Sign, where's the contract? Where do I sign? I need this now. I mean, who wouldn't sign up for that? <laughs> I, I would can't also help like it. He's to move pretty. into that house. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, I think um, I think you're right that desire demons are not just, it's not always about sex or horniness or anything like that like you can desire anything you can desire success in your workplace or a family or another pet or what you can desire anything um but like Was their the, depiction um, in the games yeah Go ahead. sorry for inter Interrupting. I was gonna ask. Uh, was the remind me? Was the uh, the demon possessing the cat in Origins a desire demon? I think it was, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a completely different thing because it is attaching itself to a child and I think like a sad, lonely child. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Isn't that where you get no. shale? Yeah, yeah, yes. that's where you pick yeah. up shale. I would like to point out, <laughs> I recently did Origins. Uh, making one of my friends play it and so I can indoctrinate them. Um, we've got, we went through the Connor quest and sent Morgan into the Fade to like expel the demon. It was a little bit weird <laughs> seeing him transform into the desire demon that first time you encounter him in the Fade and you're just like, this was a choice. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Very fair um does anyone else was anyone else going to choose desire demons um i i, like I sort of was along the same lines of desire but not again more in relation to like like what i desire in life and like aspirations both in like work and professionally and personally and like that side of things but also the flip side of that was i was tossing up between pride demons as well i'm very prideful in that 
if I do something, I want to be able to do it myself. Um, and I, I get very prideful of, of, of having that fact and being my, like completing something myself. So I feel like pride demons would be along that line as well, but also the, the really strong desire to achieve something or to complete something basically. Yeah, absolutely. I get it. Um, I think pride is one I would be kind of susceptible to also. Um, but also I think pride is hard because like pride can also be a good thing. It's not always a bad thing. Um, so I think that one's, that one's difficult. So, um, let's do one more and then we can go to our break. So who would like to go before the break? Wesbo, I'm going to pick on you. (laughs) All right. Uh, I've got a very, I've got two very um, two demons would easily easily be able to uh, uh, take me over. The first would probably be the one that wins, which is the rage demon. Uh, growing up, I had really bad anger problems. Uh, even now, uh, when I get, I I've got better at controlling my anger about when to be angry. But when I do get angry, I just I see red. Everything around me is gone, and I basically wake up a couple seconds later with people yelling at me about what did I just do? And I have no memory of what I just did. Uh, I have gone to, you know, get it worked on. Uh, It doesn't really happen anymore, but it it happens enough and I don't like it, but yeah, it's rage. Rage just consumes me. I feel you. That's one of my answers too, (laughs) but we'll come back to me. Um, Okay. So let's go to our mid break. Enchantment? Enchantment! You need me. Ugh. I am yours as always. We're without an Austin. So we don't have any reviews to read today. So if you would like to leave one and have it read out on the show, you should do that. You can leave us a review with words on iTunes or Apple, and you can leave us just a rating on Spotify. We also always shout out our first five first few patrons, which are Lisa M, Genesis, Derek B, and Zuba. Thank you guys for your support. And we are also joined by all of our lovely First Enchanter tier and higher patrons today. Thank you all all for being here. So excited to um, hang out with you and talk about Dragon Age as always. We also have a couple of new patrons, Lewis H and Xander G are both new patrons. So thank you so much for becoming patrons and Lewis, thank you for being here. And also you can join our um, Cups Podcasting and More Discord server. It's a great place. It's the home of like all of our Cups podcasts and it's a great time. There's a lot of jokes, a lot of pet pictures, a lot of nonsense that goes on over there. It's very fun. You should come join us. And you can also join the Robots Radio Discord. That is a great Discord over there, too. If you're looking for a new podcast, there are all kinds over there. So definitely come check it out. And before we finish up our mid-break, I do have a Hero of Ferelden to read. And this one is from Kolkashens or Cash. And this is his monster, Serana. <laughs> monster is the name so uh this is his worst hero ever given up to the circle by his city elf parents as a baby monster hates almost everyone as soon as monster passed his harrowing jowan whom he loathed begged monster to help him and his lover lily escape monster gleefully betrayed jowan to irving Hating the circle mages for their weakness and fear, he happily left with Duncan. And after surviving the Battle of Ostagar, he recruited Liliana and Sten in Lothering. From there, he traveled to Hanleith, where he picked up his own personal golem. Monster also allowed a desire demon to possess a small child. Traveling to Redcliffe Village, Monster was extremely annoyed to find the village plagued by skeletons. After telling his companions, not our circus, not our monkeys, Monster and gang went to the circle. Once there, Monster cackled at learning that the fool mages were finally destroyed by their own weakness. He ventured into the goal of killing everything inside. 
after Liliana freaked out on him for wanting to kill Wynn and a couple of kids, Monster told Wynn that he would save Irving. He's a liar. Monster intentionally allowed Irving to die and he begrudgingly allied with the Templars. Returning to Redcliffe Village, Monster was very happy to see that the problem fixed itself. Except for Tegan, all of the villagers were dead. Once inside the castle, Monster was livid to find another damn abomination. Knocking out Isolde, he killed Connor. Alistair freaked out, but Monster told him to get over it. Traveling to Orzammar next, Monster crowned Balin and got a golem army from Branca. He left Shale at camp in case, in case they found something he didn't want it to know. In the Brazilian forest, Monster found a ferocious army of werewolves ready to serve. Monster led the assault on the nearby Dalish camp and slaughtered everyone. Traveling to Haven while hunting for Andraste's ashes, Sten challenged Monster to a duel over leadership. After swiftly, swiftly kicking Sten's ass with blood magic and arcane warrior magical strength, Monster then kicked Sten out of the party. Sending Brother Genitivi straight home, he killed everyone in the temple and in the caves on site, including Colgrim. Monster hated almost all of his companions, but he did give many gifts to those he hated least, mainly Zevran and Shale. Ogren and Monster hated each other so much that Ogren attacked him. Monster happily killed Ogren. In preparation for the lands meet, Monster convinced Alistair and Anora to marry. He then defeated Loghain in single combat and allowed Alistair to take the final blow right in front of his wife-to-be. Anora, of course, then refused to marry Alistair, which was Monster's plan all along. Strong from all of the gold equipment and power that he took from everyone he met, Monster slayed the Archdemon and survived because he made an old god baby with Morrigan. After the battle, Mor Monster went on to become the Terran of Gwaran, which he then ruled with an iron fist. Thank you to Cash for that very entertaining and somewhat frightening <laughs> hero of Ferelden. <laughs> Let's get back to it. Well, that was uh, Orlesian. Dareth Shiran. Oh, you fear barbarians will swoop down upon you. Yes, swooping is bad. I um hate you for making me read this. I never thought you would read it in the show. Then <laughs> you should have submitted it in the chat. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Oh, okay. I um barely held that together. So thank you. <laughs> All right. Um who wants to go next? Who hasn't gone yet? <laughs> I'll go. <clears throat> I'll drag this down. It's fine. Um so for me, uh I mean, a common theme here seems to be rage, but I think for me, uh, another big one is uh, regret, for I am a man of constant sorrow. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, that one would definitely, that, that one's got some skeletons in a closet somewhere that probably come back out and kill me or something. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. I feel like we all need to go to group therapy after today, <laughs> um, releasing our inner demons. Um, so I have, I, and it's, it's so, it's odd to me that a lot of us have so many of these demons in common, um, because like Wes, I definitely have struggled with anger in the past, but I am like that silent anger type who will let the rage build and fuel until I silently lash out at things. I have made complex and evil plans for revenge and vengeance and justice and just like make me angry enough and you'll understand why you don't like it when I get angry. But that's kind of an old gen thing. I, I have worked on it quite a bit and I have let go of the anger. Uh, desire demons oh there are definitely things that i desire in this world that i would like to be handed to me on a silver platter the desire demon herself being one of them but uh i'm trying to stay out of horny jail today um but i think one that could very 
easily and insidiously sneak up on me would be a sloth demon because I'm a gamer and I can sit in front of the computer or a console for hours and hours and then realize I haven't moved in 12 hours. Uh, I should probably eat something maybe. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there are definitely a lot of demons in Dragon Age that I would be susceptible to. All right, Nicholas, last but not least. Uh, so I thought about this a lot, actually. Uh, um, I think I would have to go with a fear demon. Um, insofar that I'm interpreting fear as anxiety, uh, because that's definitely something that I wrestle with um, on a constant basis, just running through conversations in my head that haven't actually happened, but I'm just like, I gotta prepare myself. I have to like defend myself. I gotta defend my point of view. Um, so it's very like defensive fear, I suppose. Um, so that's what I was thinking. The other one was also rage. And I was really thinking of that, uh, one of the quests from Jaws of Hakon, where one of the scouts uh, gets possessed by a rage demon and just kind of goes off and you have to track them down. And I, I thought that was an interesting quest because it was, he was rageful out of, from like a pure intentioned place, I suppose. Like he was like really mad that the hack and I killed his friend. And so to me, I was like, that's kind of how I feel about like, not to get too real, like political situations in the United States, shall we say, nothing specific, but I was like rage from a place of wanting things to be better than they are. I get that. Um, I did that quest like not recently, but one of the last times I played Inquisition and I had never done it before. And I totally agree with you. I thought it was really poignant and like, he's just so overcome by like, it's almost righteous anger um, that it, he's just overtaken by the rage demon. Um, and that's a good transition because I will share my, one of mine is also rage um, for that reason, for similar reasons, because I, and I remember like in grad school and seminary when I was faced with injustice, like from my friends, um, from people who like had experienced terrible things, like I was just so furious on their behalf. And um, I feel like it would be really easy for me to, to be overtaken by rage. And also if you have ever seen me stream Assassin's Creed specifically, um, I have a tendency to rage quit like a lot. Um, which is why I don't stream that often. So for me, rage is definitely a big one up there. Um, but also I have another one. Um, and I think my other one would be regret. And this one is a little bit more serious, but I definitely have like a tendency towards sentimentality and nostalgia. Um, so much so that like when I was in college, I, um, coined this term called graduation goggles which is when like I would be so pissed at my school um trying to like fight for institutional change trying to make things better trying to like lead other people and do all this good stuff right and I would be so annoyed with my college the institution and then like senior year would roll around specifically the second semester of senior year and all of a sudden something would just switch in me and i would be remembering like the good times i would be um fond of like all the times i had like three years ago or two years ago whatever um so i think regret and like looking back being nostalgic is something also that i would be very very susceptible to probably even more um than rage so those are mine. I also have notes from Austin that I will read. So Austin says, 
he says that he would probably be a sloth demon because it wouldn't really take that much to convince me to be lazy and play video games all day. So I feel like I would be easy prey for a sloth demon. He also says another one might be a pride demon as I have a bad habit of assuming that I am always right and that I know best. So I feel like a pride demon could very easily manipulate that. Um, that is correct to all of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I see in chat that we all have opinions about why so many of us are, I think we're susceptible to rage. So psych, did you want to say something about that? Yeah. I, I mean, I kind of got the feeling, uh, most of us here are the similar g generational thing here. And we all kind of grew up maybe on the same, um, media right and so we look around and we go you know this isn't the world we were told we were going to get we and this isn't the world we were told we were going to lead and why do i why do i still have to continue to do it like this why do i still have to continue to allow you to get away with stuff so yeah i think for a lot of us like there's of course the personal reasons why any of us have rage but it doesn't help to be constantly nudged with a overbearing uh social issue for any of us and then being told it's all our fault yes that oh my god that uh it's it's definitely a big thing in australia at the moment is that um housing prices have like skyrocketed in here, here since covid and i i keep getting told oh you're buying coffee but if you didn't buy that you'd be able to afford a house and i was like doesn't sound right to me the house is seven hundred thousand dollars. I think my one coffee a day isn't going to save help me save that much money. Yeah, well, what are we in the twilight zone back in the fifties when everything was five cents? What are you nuts? Yeah, that's exactly what I brought up. And then, like, yeah, it's 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 definitely a thing, like a generational thing, or at least partly a generational thing. I think. I also think it's really ironic, though, that like we feel like we all have a lot of rage, but also, and I'm not trying to stereotype anyone. So if there are any of these, this group of people that are listening, they're probably going to be mad at me. But like, I feel like boomers have so much rage also, like so much rage. Um, so I, I don't know, like, I do feel like it's a generational thing, but I think it manifests differently. I don't even really know what boomers are mad about. So <laughs> they're mad at the fact that we're mad at things and they don't understand why we're mad. They're mad at us. Yeah. That they're tracks. mad that we're mad. Do we want to go over some of the demons that nobody talked about and yes. just say like, you know, what would, I don't know, would anybody be susceptible to one of these and why? Yeah, let's do it. So the first one on my list that nobody mentioned is Nightmare. Okay, I actively thought about Nightmare for a while, but I feel like it's easier to kind of collapse all of the, uh, like, that whole thing family of demons you got nightmare at the very top and then and i feel like this is weird but fear demons are technically above terror demons and then below terror de demons is the fearlings and i feel like fear and terror should be flipped because i feel like fear is more intense um but i feel like with nightmare it's just like hey would you be susceptible to the you know the ultimate epitome of fear as a concept, and I'd be like, well, of course. Yeah, I think I think that's a good point. Is that that like fear and like terror and and even nightmare to a point are all like commonplace almost. So so while you'd be susceptible to them, it's probably not something, or it's it's something that everyone would be susceptible to, I guess. Also, then specifically yourself. Actually disagree a little bit i think that fear is more constant like we always have fears there's always going to be something that we're scared of i think terror is more in the moment like something is happening to us right now that is causing us to go out of normal fear that keeps us alive into oh my gosh i'm going to die kind of a thing and just fearlings i think that those are just like the little things that cause us anxiety i think they are they're really anxiety demons, but they can't say that because it's a fantasy game and they don't have anxiety as a thing. And that's kind of to my point, because um, 
Like I think I do agree with you that that terror is a more intense version of fear. But so I think terror should be above fear. The one thing that I would add to that is like I do think we can experience terror at like the prospect of a future event. Um, like I'm a lawyer and I'm absolutely terrified of the idea of going to trial. Like you know, this at some point in the next couple of months. Um, versus like. You know, I'm also an arachnophobe. So if I look down and there was a tarantula on me, you know, that's going to be probably comparable levels of fear for me. But I realize both of those also aren't reasonable. Okay, fair. Um, also, just a quick, like, I guess, game thing. I know the terror demons. Which one are the fear demons? Like, what's their character model? I'm forgetting. I know I should know this. It's it's really hard to describe. I'll put a picture in the patron okay. chat. I feel like the terror demons are just stronger because they have that uh, jump from the ground and knock you down ability, which is annoying as mm-hmm. hell. So I also feel like terror demons should just be t- typically stronger than the fear demon. The terror demons piss me off. Like it's, I can't, I can't even talk about them. They make me so mad. It's okay. Uh, Let that rage out. Let it flow. See? see? see so we're all going to ragey horny jail at the end of this it sounds like we're going somewhere that's for sure wouldn't be sprinkled with depression yeah i'm that extra spice at the top um okay so what about what about the envy demon nobody mentioned that one that'd be me hello hi proceed that's that's like a high third um it's mainly because I'm envious of I see people walking the streets. I'm a young, I'm a fairly young person, and my body has, is failing me constantly. And I get to watch people do way stupider stuff than I do, and yet they can get up and just walk away, and nothing happens. But yet here I am. I stand up funny, and I've sprained my ankle. Like I don't get it. I also. Um think envy is a a strong third for me and not necessarily I think when we think about envy it's like always not always but most of the time is like only financial but I think about it in a lot of other ways like envious for having like the advantages that people older than me had kind of like what we were talking about early or um envious of like having the ability to buy a house um, and those kinds of things. So I don't necessarily think about it as like always, oh, I just want more money. Like I just want to be more ambitious. I definitely think about being susceptible to envy as being envious of like people who are in a place in their life where I am not and want to be. Um, So I think I see that one too, for sure. I was going to say, I think that envy demons seem to be really tied to desire demons too because I mean think about it if you're susceptible to a desire demon like I totally am hello Cullen anyone who has what I want I'm going to be jealous of yeah absolutely to that point I also think that envy can be tied to pride as well Um, because it's like you are thinking of yourself in you know like attributes or something that somebody else has and you're like I want that for myself. And ultimately that is a selfish, it's a selfish desire. And so it kind of goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Like if desire and pride had a baby, maybe that would be envy. I I was just going along the same lines as you, Shelby, with envy about like things like houses and where you want to be in life and seeing other people in that state and you yourself, I don't know, feeling envious that you're not there yet. It's, it's, yeah. Definitely agree. Wes, did you have something you wanted to add? Oh, I was just getting on saying that uh, envy can kind of complement every type of demon because Mm. it goes so well with rage. You're envious about something that somebody else has and that makes you angry because you don't have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the only like real demon left is the hunger demon. What do y'all think about that one? Oh, I'm a fat ass. I could easily eat all day. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Food. Food is good. Uh, uh, <laughs> sort of along the lines of the hunger demon. My friends and I would used to go out to a restaurant and we'd order our main meal and then we'd order a second meal to share between each other. 
That's amazing. That is amazing. I, was, uh, I tell you what we called that meal, but it's not family friendly. We, uh, me and my partner just went on a double date to an all-you-can-eat sushi place, and I was kicked out. Because of something you did? Or because well, no, you I just way too because much? I, I wouldn't stop. <laughs> Poor little um, Wes. I'm worried about it. I you. know who would be most susceptible to hunger demons. Hobbits. Because second breakfast. Listen, we have sup- That's accurate. We have supper up in Canada, so I am the most classified to be a hobbit. I was going to say, like, does the hunger demon make you want to eat and then they feed off of it so that way you're always hungry? You always feel that hunger? Is that what that is? I'm, I mean, it's yes, but it's not just like physical hunger. Like it, it can be hunger for anything, like hunger for ambition or um, whatever you can uh, hunger for, I guess. it's. I feel like it's very similar to both envy and desire. Um, it feels like they're very connected. Hunger for power. Yes, thank you, Wesbo. What about a thirst demon? So <laughs> that was actually another thought. That I had this discussion in uh, in a chat earlier. Uh, it, like a de- a demon that you wish existed that you knew would be your demon. And I was like, if there was a vice demon, like alcohol or tobacco or something along those lines, your favorite substance of choice i was like that would be my demon (laughs) i would be very susceptible to a tequila demon a demon that would give me bell's library from beauty and the beast i feel like a substance demon is just like addiction times infinity like you know that addiction demon will be really good you know if my addiction demon comes with said addiction they're welcome to come over no thanks <laughs> so something i was thinking about while we were all talking is that it very much feels like all of these are interconnected and i know we talk about that a lot but i just guess i never realized how much many of these were connected to each other and how like they can all um kind of tie into one another so it kind of illustrates to me taking it back to thetis how easy it is to actually be susceptible to a demon like for a mage um, for anyone but especially for a mage who's like constantly trying to fight demons i was having very similar thoughts about that how like as we all started talking about which demons would most affect us how how one demon can sort of lead into another demon and then that one can lead into the next so it's like a slippery slope of demon possession it does make you wonder how humanity in theatus has managed to achieve the level of technology that it has when it really could be so easy for that to happen um especially when you have people who can throw fireball just by conjuring it how do you manage to build these castles and achieve a level of technology of that time like it, it always makes me wonder when i see those kinds of things like you are obviously outclassed by the magic you have created here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And at that question, like, how did they even create civilization? You know, like, seems to me that they might might have a stronger fortitude than we do, <laughs> just naturally. Part of it, though, is like Vivian says, when you're talking to her in Haven, mages are outnumbered in Thetis 100 to 1. Is despite the fact that we see a lot of mages in the game and and or can be mages, there's not that many of them, comparatively speaking, to the rest of the population. It's so rare that slaves into venture think one day I might have a kid who's a mage or I might figure out that I'm a mage and suddenly I can change my entire life. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. It does make me wonder about pre-Vale, Elvanon, how did, did possession happen? Like I want more information on that because I would think that, you know, we could argue that Taventer and much of Thetis is built on top of ancient Elven society post the creation of the veil. So maybe that's how they managed to like get where they are now. But like, what about before then? Like, Yeah, I, and that's where like, you know, there are several different religions in Thetis and that's where their different theologies come into play. Like the Chantry would have a different answer to that. Elves would, Deventer, they would all have different things to say. So um, 
maybe we'll get some more answers in the next game. We'll see. We better get some answers so, from a certain egghead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We should, um, but we have a few more minutes. So uh, before we wrap up, let's kind of go around the room. We can um, go in the same order as we introduce ourselves and um, you can just plug whatever streams or podcasts or anything you're on, anything you're doing um, where listeners can find you on the internet. Uh, yes, I, um, I, I am cash, uh, underscore Collins on Twitter. I think, uh, cash C Collins on Instagram, but otherwise I'm going to use this time. Join the discord. It is amazing. Wonderful people. We have lots of fun. Uh, join us in the Patreon chats. They're obviously lots of fun and I love being here. Thank you so much. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash LVCC13. I think, I think that's what it is. I honestly don't know off the top of my head. That's a, hopefully a good guess. And I stream Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect, Kingdom Hearts, and of course my personal favorite, Dragon Eight. Uh, I am Wesbo. Uh, I am newly found uh, as the Wesbo Shins on the Discord. I'm Lewis Hackfeth. That's H-A-C-K-F-A-T-H um, on Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter. Pretty low tech here, uh, but I am Capricorn Tower on Instagram. I am Genesis, one half of the Two Girls, One Ship podcast, where we analyze, rate, and review video game romances. And newly taken over uh, the Cyberpunk Lorecast, be, uh, Toasty and I are the new hosts for the previous uh, Tom used Tom from the Robots Network used to host it with captain logan but toasty and i are teaming forces to talk about the lore of all cyberpunk that's awesome um so you guys can find me at psych 88 on discord i am uh one part of the mcu lore cast where we analyze the movie and go how well did that translate from the comic books and i talk mainly about the comic book lore and then I am also on the Mass Effect Blue Shift, a, a live play tabletop RPG set in Mass, you know, set in Mass Effect universe. Uh, I play the Citadel security agent Jack Parizo, a uh, <coughs> unashamed ladies' man. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I've got going on. And Genesis, congratulations on getting the Cyberpunk forecast. Like, thank you. Yeah, uh, we just recorded our first episode with Tom, kind of doing like a handoff thing, going, here are your new hosts for the show, and then we're, Toasty and I are going to start putting out episodes next week. And we did get the brand new Twitch channel set up, so TV or twitch.tv slash cyberpunk lore cast. Awesome. Everyone go follow. Yeah, I'm still here, just hung overly sitting in a corner. Um, I don't have anything to plug, but I'll be on the Dragon Age Lorecast Discord uh, as LSFMX and um, mostly hanging around and shipping wares and cash. <laughs> um, accurate. So thank you all for being here. This has been a blast. We'll do it again next month. Um, the poll for y'all should go up um, for next month's topic in a few days. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you so much for listening to the Dragon Age Lorecast. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Dragon Age Lorecast. As always, you can find us on Twitter at DA Lorecast. If you have any lore questions, topics to unpack, or side character suggestions, email them to us at DALorecast at gmail.com. The Dragon Age Lorecast is a part of the Robots Radio Rocket Club. You can join the Robots Radio Network Discord by clicking the link in our episode description. If you enjoyed our show, we'd love it if you'd subscribe and give us a review. See you next time. Do you love Dragon Age? Have you always wanted to learn more about its vast world and detailed lore? Are you still attached to your hero of Ferelden, even a decade after Dragon Age Origins came out? Or maybe you're a newer fan, still discovering a new tidbit or quest every day. Well, either way, the Dragon Age Lorecast is the podcast for you. 
I'm Austin, also known as Teacup. And I'm Shelby, also known as SheCup. And come and join us as we embark on a journey to explore and discover all things Dragon Age. We'll discuss all kinds of topics, from Lyrium to the Chantry and the great mysteries of the old gods, and even more that even you Bioware superfans might not know about. So come and listen on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. And always remember... Swooping in.